What the fuck? What the fuck is this? That is not funny. That is not, there's nothing. Hey guys, it's Nathan here. Uh, no Kenny today, but he's letting me post on the channel. So, ArcX launched, and apparently, Kathy Wood has a very unique vision for what the future of space exploration will look like. So, what does this mean for us? Well, this was really bad news for our short-term play. We were hoping to get into low-cap space docks, have Kathy Wood pump them, and then get out quickly. This obviously didn't happen, which is disappointing. However, this is good news for the companies that we like long-term, since they're still trading at very reasonable prices. Today we're going to look at one such company, Maxar Technologies. Alright, here's what Maxar looks like as of the recording of this video. It's currently trading at a $2.8 billion market cap and it's had a pretty good year. Now, this company was trading at penny stock prices just last year, but don't let that fool you. Maxar has been around for over 60 years, has built over 280 spacecraft, and has 2,200 collective years on orbit between all of its spacecraft. Also, they've worked on very prominent projects with NASA, building the robotic sampling arms for the Spirit, Opportunity, Curiosity, and Perseverance rovers. Why is a company this prominent and this respected in the space industry trading so low right now? Well, we'll get to that later. But first, let's talk about what Maxar is. Maxar is actually made up of four companies. You have SSL, which is the company that builds all of the satellites and space infrastructure. You have MDA and Digital Globe, which both manage Maxar's constellations of Earth imaging satellites. And you have Radiant Solutions, which takes the data from MDA and Digital Globe and compiles it into actionable information for its clients. Now, that's a lot to process, so I found a clip from Maxar Technologies which demonstrates one of the use cases for all of this technology put together. A hurricane develops over the Atlantic. Its storm surge strikes the eastern seaboard with terrible force, flooding streets, tunnels, and subway lines. The breadth of this damage is not yet fully understood. Media and emergency services scramble to provide insight and support as the skies begin to clear over an environment that is both dangerous and chaotic. In as little as 19 minutes before their transit over the North Pole, a new plan is generated that includes the hurricane-affected region. Arriving at a blistering 25,000 kilometers per hour over our targets in New England, the Constellation goes to work, assembling a detailed collection of data of this breaking event. Our highly maneuverable satellites quickly orient their sensors to collect from a wide sweep of angles capturing a range of data from panchromatic and multispectral imagery to stereo and 3D data. Having collected massive amounts of imagery and data, our satellites contact one of our remote ground stations, offloading onboard data while simultaneously receiving the next collection plan. Offloaded information is instantly relayed to our processing and analysis experts. The collected images are aligned, color corrected, sharpened, and orthorectified creating a final mosaic that is accurate, refined, and highly detailed. Employing some of the best geospatial experts in the world, Digital Globe Analytics has assembled clues from these highly accurate, up-to-date images and has located ingress and egress routes among the many flooded areas and damaged roads. This information may provide life-saving help to ground crews in the damaged areas. Utilizing Digital Globe Cloud Services, we're able to put important worldwide imagery information into the hands of our customers in as little as two hours after collection, with global access speeds at less than five seconds. I hope that serves as a good demonstration of what Maxer is capable of. Now let's take a look at what the company has planned for its future. The primary thing that Maxar has on the books right now is Worldview Legion. It is the newest constellation of satellites with all of the newest cutting edge technology which stands to triple their Earth imaging coverage. Despite setbacks from the pandemic, this constellation is still set to launch this year. Also, Maxer has several very prominent NASA contracts coming up in the next few years. Firstly, they will be designing the sampling arm that will be going to the moon in 2024 along with the first woman and next man to land on the moon in the NASA Artemis program. 
They will also be designing the power and propulsion module of the upcoming Lunar Gateway Space Station. This is a space station that will be put into a lunar orbit and the module that is currently the leftmost module with the massive solar panels will be supplied by Maxer. I want to take a second to emphasize exactly how impressive this contract is. The Lunar Gateway Space Station will be supporting human life farther from Earth than anyone has ever been before, and NASA is trusting Maxar to power the whole thing. Now we get to talk about what I think is the most exciting thing Maxar is working on. They are currently developing a spacecraft that could refuel and repair satellites that are already in orbit. Satellites can cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and repairing a satellite can cost just as much as building and launching a new one. But with this new technology, Maxer could repair and refuel and even reposition satellites for a fraction of the cost. This is a really exciting business opportunity because currently there are hundreds of billions of dollars worth of hardware orbiting the Earth. And at the rate at which Maxer is developing their satellite servicing technology, they could soon find themselves in a unique position where they could sell insurance on all of that equipment. The first demonstrations of this technology are already underway in space. It's time I talk to you about why Maxer is trading so cheap. It's because on paper, the company sucks. It's a debt-ridden corporation with a negative PE. However, I am not concerned about any of that, and here's why. This is Maxer's CEO, Daniel L. Jablonski. Daniel is an absolute legend. He is, dare I say, the Lisa Sue of space. Now, I wouldn't make such a bold claim without evidence, so here's that evidence. Daniel took over Maxer Technologies in January of 2019, after a year when it lost over 90% of its value. Since taking over the company, Daniel has been able to return 600% for Maxer investors, all while getting rid of the company's debt and setting it on a trajectory for long-term growth. Here is Daniel's plan for Maxer moving forward. As you can see, we are just finishing up his reset and stabilize phase, where he is deleveraging the company and reallocating their resources. All major Maxer debt has been moved from 2023 to 2027, and with $1.7 billion in backlogged orders, the company now has plenty of runway. Next is their returning to growth phase. Yes, even after returning 600% for investors, Daniel does not think Maxer is yet to return to growth. In this phase, Daniel will fix what has been Maxer's biggest barrier to growth in the past their heavy reliance on contracts for income. When you don't know when your next paycheck is coming in, it is very difficult to scale your business. Daniel is fixing this by growing subscription products such as Worldview Legion and their satellite imaging services. Longer term, once Maxar has returned to growth, Daniel will be leveraging the company back up and increasing margin. This will allow Maxar to have top-line growth, and this might be when we start seeing some of that satellite insurance money coming in. Overall, this plan is extremely ambitious, and Daniel is seeing many years into the future. However, based on what he's been able to accomplish so far, it's difficult to doubt that he'll be able to do it. After all, even though conquering the galaxy is not one of these longer-term bullet points, it's hard to believe that Daniel is not plotting it. So, to summarize, Maxar is in a growing industry, has strong leadership, is heavily trusted by NASA, is trading at a discount, has a backlog of orders worth more than half of the company's market cap, and is spearheading a new technology which could lead them to dominating a market that doesn't even exist yet. Why is this company not in ArcX? I have no idea, it seems kind of ridiculous. For me personally, Maxar is a company I plan to buy and hold and ideally never sell. However, I am just a teenager on the internet, not a financial advisor, so please do your own due diligence before deciding to invest in any companies. However, Maxar does represent a very interesting investment opportunity. 
Thank you so much for watching and shout out to Cody in the Innovation Lab for helping me do some of the due diligence for this video. Alright guys, peace.